Members of an independent panel in Japan have spent more than half a year trying to figure out what went wrong before and after the nuclear accident at the Fukushima Daiichi. They released an interim report last month heaping blame on the government and Tokyo Electric Power Company. We're digging into the document on this week's Nuclear Watch. The report faults authorities for failing to predict the tsunami, for the emergency procedures they followed, and for the way they communicated. I'm instructing residents who live within 10 kilometers of Fukushima Daiichi to evacuate. The report says the government issued unclear evacuation orders. Residents did not know where to go or what to do. Many of those residents faced a dilemma in the days after March 11th. Should they stay or should they go? Here's one man's story. Masahiro Yamazaki is the vice principal of a high school in the town of Namie. His classrooms are within 10 kilometers of Fukushima Daiichi. Yamazaki and other Namie residents left their homes on March 12th after the government expanded its evacuation zone to include their town. Many headed for a school 28 kilometers from the plant. I heard announcements telling us to evacuate immediately. I was trying to flee, but I didn't know what was happening. That afternoon, a hydrogen explosion ripped through the reactor number one building at Fukushima Daiichi. It prompted the government to expand the evacuation zone to 20 kilometers. Yamazaki was in charge of the shelter located inside the school he'd moved to, but he couldn't get information from state or local governments. He and many others worried about their safety. The government started using a system to forecast how the fallout would likely spread. The system predicted that radiation was moving toward Yamazaki and other residents. But the government didn't share its predictions with the public. And the interim report says the government didn't even plan on using the system when it arranged its evacuation. Yamazaki and about 1,200 others stayed in the shelter for about four days. I keep thinking I would have evacuated further away from the plant if I'd had the relevant information. NHK World's Hiroshi Yokokawa joins us now. He's read through the interim report. So Hiroshi, what should the Japanese government do to improve its crisis management? The report says the government needs to be ready for any kind of accident and be ready to clearly communicate with residents. My reading of the report suggests authorities did not understand the kinds of risks they were dealing with. It notes they weren't prepared because they stuck to the idea of absolute safety. And they carried out the same evacuation drill over and over again. They weren't ready for the scenario they faced on March 11th. The panel also mentioned the government needs to, be, uh, needs to keep the international community better informed. What's the next step for the investigative panel? Members plan to interview the lawmakers who were in Prime Minister Khan's cabinet at the time of the accident. They are trying to find out how and why certain decisions were made. The panel will also investigate the history of nuclear power in Japan and Japanese social structure that contributed to the accident. The final report is expected by the summer. Thanks, Hiroshi.